Friends, good morning. Anitra here with Simply Living Smart, and I'm glad that you're joining me today. I've been thinking a lot about this episode recently, and I know probably a lot of you are going to be thinking this is important for me, and I hope that this is important to everybody because I think eventually we're all going to find ourselves in a place where we're going to need what I'm gonna talk about. We are in the midst still of this crazy pandemic, and even four months in, we're wondering, is it ever gonna let up? Or is it ever gonna get better? And then we see spikes in different places in the country. Well, whether it's the coronavirus that we're worried about or other medical emergencies, the time will come where we are going to have to have our information in one place that's secure, that's organized, where we cannot, we don't feel panic, but we feel empowered to give the information that is necessary to get the most accurate and efficient care. So today, I want to focus on this mini medical emergency binder tool that I'm going to let you download at no cost to help you organize yourself as well. Because I feel like when we are in a panic and when things are going spiraling, you know, downward and we're in a medical emergency, whether it's for ourselves or someone we love, the last thing we need to think about is medical doses and medical history, right? We want to be there 100% for those people and be able to feel like we have all the necessary information for the physicians and the caretakers so that we can get that care. Now, have any of you ever been in a situation where you had to take a family member or a spouse to the emergency room? That's a scary time. I've done it myself and you know, you're just in survival mode. It's so scary and you're thinking, what should I know? What should I be able to tell them? Well, today I'm gonna to give you the tools to help you so that you can feel more at peace. What happens is, you know, we can't go in there and, and on demand tell the physicians, well, these are the medications he's taking and these are the dosages and this is the last time he had this episode and these are the doctors and physicians that he sees. That's kind of a, that's a lot of information to just download and just to have in your head for all of your family members. But wouldn't it be great if you had a folder or a way to communicate with those physicians where you could just hand them a folder, a print copy of diagnoses diagnoses and medications and physicians and um, conditions all in one nice little packet where they could get the information and you wouldn't have to be scrambling for them. So I think this would be a great way to have some peace of mind. One thing that we need to understand is that every hospital system has a different software system. So just because we want to get information from one, um, you know, facility to another doesn't mean that that's really going to happen. Sometimes that takes some work. I'll tell you that it only took me about two and a half, three hours to put together this mini medical binder for three members of my family this week. And it was really simple. I, I was able to get all the records that I needed. But you know, the shocking thing was I didn't even know what hospital I would have to go to if there was a medical emergency. That's how clueless I was about, I mean, I knew prescriptions and I knew things like that, but which was the best facility for me to go to. So I quickly learned um, you know, how, how that would look. And then I thought about what's the quickest route. I mean, these are things that we need to know before the emergency happens, because sometimes we just are not all there to, to make sound decisions. So it's important if you have different medical facilities that you have records at to gather those together and have them in one place. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, today, I want to introduce you to this really great PDF. And this is not my work. I'm not going to take credit for it, but I found it and I love it. And it's called the Mini Medical Emergency Information Binder. And it's mini because it's only six pages long. You can actually purchase a longer version on another website. It's not mine. But I thought this would be a great kickoff because it's something, again, that you can do easily in, in a few hours and gather information that's gonna be helpful for you. I've put the link in the show notes, so just click on the link, it'll take you right to my online um, store and you can download that for free. And feel free to share it or, or um, pass it along to those that you love. Really, every member of your family should have one of these binders. The binder itself that I'm gonna let you download comes with one um, page to fill out for an adult and one for a child. But again, if you have more members of your family who need those, go ahead and make more copies. So let's talk about each page just really quickly. This episode is not gonna be long, but I wanted to let you know what kind of information they're gonna be asking for and how simple it is for you to gather that information. So page one 
is a family information sheet. Again, there's one for an adult and one for a child. They're gonna ask you really basic things like what's your name? What is your emergency contact and phone number? Do you have any allergies? What is your height and weight? Your social security number? Who are the doctors and dentists and other physicians that you visit? Where is your pharmacy? That's a big one. And then also some health insurance information. And for those of you who might have um, multiple health insurance plans, it's a great idea to be able to just have a photocopy of the front and the back of your medical, of your insurance cards um, just tucked into this binder. So that's a great idea. You never know if you have to run to the emergency room, you don't have your purse or your wallet or whatever, and they're gonna need to have that on file. So just have it there. In fact, I would recommend that you have a, a copy of these binders in every vehicle that you have. Um, we'll also talk about having one on your fridge and why that's important. So think about that. So that was page one, just the very, very basic information about you. Page two is a one page medical information sheet. Again, one for an adult and one for a child. And this covers any medical problems such as diabetes, hypertension, um, things like that. Any medications or treatments that you're taking and what those dosages are. Um, that's really important to know if you're on medical equipment. So if you're using, um, uh, if you're on a CPAP or if you are using an insulin pump, things like that, any medication or any equipment that you use. Your immunization record. Now this is really important. And I know by, you know, being a mom of, of four children that sometimes we moved around. And so we had our immunizations done at different clinics. So being able to just gather all of those up together onto one card is really important. Then you don't have to remember or try to guess if you've had that immunization. So have a copy of that as well as your insurance cards in that binder. Um, also other he important health information that you find will be helpful to the physicians. Page three is childhood and early 20s information. So what did you have as a child? Did you have asthma? Um, did you have psoriasis? I mean, there are all kinds of things that actually resolve themselves as, as adults, but it's important to know when those started, how old you were, maybe what the treatments were that you tried, what worked and what didn't, and how long it lasted. It's, in, it, it's really um, amazing to understand that so many things are related to one another. So you might have something in childhood that might surface later in a different kind of autoimmune disease. So that's important for the physicians to know. What are your current conditions? What are you maybe suffering from or, or getting treated for right now? Um, are there treatments that have and haven't worked? Are there medications that you've taken that were not um, good for you or that you had reactions to? These are all things that are gonna really save time. When you're in that emergency room, they're not gonna have to go through a whole slew of questions. They're gonna be able to just look at that binder. Changes in behavior and symptoms. This is something that's important to look at as well. They say that oftentimes changes in behavior are even more um, apparent than changes in lab work. So if, if you're on a medication and it's making you feel you know, crazy or depressed or sad or tired, um, chances are that dose or that medication is wrong for you. So it's important to report those or have a record of those in the binder. So that's page three. Page four is the family medical history form. So this is important too. It actually goes back two generations. So your parents and your grandparents. And so it will ask if they've had things like dementia, birth defects, diabetes, cancer, hearing problems, asthma. Um, why is that important to you? Because of course they'll be able to trace if you are, have a likelihood of having those. Um, I thought it was really interesting as I watched certain things develop with, um, with COVID-19 and different treatments that they use for different people who've had different medical conditions. So again, it just cuts to your treatment more quickly and more efficiently if they know what your family history is. So there will be a side for your paternal side and there will be some information for your maternal side as well. So it's important to know that. Um, page five is a diagnosis tracker. So what have you been medically diagnosed with? Who were you diagnosed by and what was the date of that diagnosis? And then what are the treatments that were tried? Um, I think that's so important to know. And of course, what are the results? What were the results? So that's, that's a little bit deeper. And then number six is gonna be something that's pretty easy if you open your medicine cabinet. So number six is all of your medications. Now it's important to also list your um, vitamins and any supplements that you take. 
because those can interact, of course, with medications that are, um, you know, pharmacy based. So, so you want to indicate what medications you were prescribed, when you were prescribed that, how long you've been taking it. Um, you might be taking a drug that um, has changed over time or, or um, you know, has, has gone under a different name. They're going to want to know that too. What the effects were, what the dosages are. I mean, I was, I'm embarrassed to admit that, you know, my son who's diabetic, he knows all of his dosages and he knows when he, his pump does what. But if I was in a position where I had to take him in and he was incapacitated, I would not have a way except for handing them his pump to be able to say, well, these are his doses and this is how he corrects. So I don't know how much of that I need to know, but I would like to have as much down on paper as I can. So in any situation, if you're taking care of an elderly parent, um, those are so important to know, not only what they take, but what time of day they take, how much they take, um, and what those medications do. Um, so again, you know, a combination of medications and uh, supplements can have um, some serious side effects. So we wanna make sure that they know um, what we're taking. And um, so, so that's basically it. That's the six pages. It's pretty straightforward. So if you've been able to follow that and you say, yep, I know that, yep, I know that, and kind of check them off in your mind, these are the very basic things that physicians are gonna to want to know when you go in for an emergency. So I hope that's helpful. Now let's talk really quickly about how to store that binder. I would recommend definitely downloading it, making a paper copy for every member of your family. Um, I think it's even a great idea to print them out and give the family members a, a blank copy because chances are, you know, if you email it to somebody, they're not gonna have time to print it out. So just go that one step further and um, make sure that everybody has one. I think it's important to communicate where that binder is. So if you have a spouse or a partner or a friend and you've filled out this binder, either take a picture of all the pages and have them on your phone or let them have them on their phone so that if something happens, you have a backup plan. Now again, I think it's a great, a great idea to have it in the trunk of your car, in each vehicle that you have. Um, I think you can't be safe enough. And another way um, to do it is just to say, um, I'm gonna take a, a manila folder and I'm gonna put it on my refrigerator. Do you know that when emergency medical technicians are called to the home, so if you're calling an ambulance, their number one thing is to look on your fridge for medical information. So it would be a great idea to have that stapled in a manila folder with you know, emergency or something that, that catches their eye and that they can take with you and into the ambulance and to the hospital. So um, these are things that we have to think of ahead of time. It might be a little uncomfortable, but to have a backup plan is really important. Um, and it really could mean life or death. I think it really could mean. So here's another thing that I've learned by studying how the care is given during this coronavirus and, and by kind of watching what's going on in New York. So many patients were asked to be dropped off at the door. If they came and were dropped off at the hospital, there were no family members who could go in with them. And what a scary thing, right? So if they weren't well, or if they weren't in a place where they could give medical information, wouldn't it have been great if that spouse or that partner could have just slipped that envelope, you know, under their, under their legs and said, okay, well, here's everything you need to know. So I think it does give us that sense of empowerment and that sense of control that we might not have otherwise. Another thing that was a challenge was that medical consents were not signed off on at the hospital. If you were alone, they would call on the phone and try to get medical consent over the phone. So having the information to make better choices for the care is a really, really smart idea. So I hope that this put some fire under your feet like it did for me. Um, I thought it was really easy to put together and I liked having everything in one place and knowing that there is a plan and that all I have to do in a medical emergency is to show compassion and care and try to breathe and everything else would be taken care of because I have the information I need to give to the physicians and the caretakers. So really at the end of the day, I want you to think that it's not if you're going to have an emergency, it's when. And it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the coronavirus, it could be any emergency. So be organized and start putting together this mini medical binder, it's so simple to do. Um, remember you can download it here, the link is in the show notes, and um, I hope you share it with everyone that, that you love. So next week, I want to give you kind of a heads up of what we're doing on Simply Living Smart. We're going to be talking about 
food combinations and the order of food and the science behind it. There's a lot of science that goes behind it. So if you might be experiencing some digestive distress and don't know why, um, you know you're not allergic to foods because you can eat them at different times and you have you know fine results, you might just want to listen to the science behind the combination of foods. And I'd love to share that information with you and let you make an educated decision. This is certainly not, um, I'm not a physician myself and um, I'm not a nutritionist, but I have um, abided by some of these concepts and they truly help. So I want to share that with you as well. And remember that January is our organization month. So we're going to be talking about everything organization. We're going to start with your paper piles and everything that comes into your home and how to sift through those. And then we're also going to talk about every room in your home and how to go through systematically and declutter and organize so that you can feel more peace and more relaxed in your home. We're also going to take you to the garage, to your purse, to the car. It goes on. So I'm really looking forward to that. I want to encourage you, if there are places or spaces in your home that drive you crazy, or if you have an organization challenge that you cannot conquer, then leave a comment in the show notes and let me know because I'd love to address it. And this is something I love. I'm super passionate about organization and um, making life just a little bit more laid back and joyful. So thanks for joining me today. I always love having you along. For all of you fathers out there, happy Father's Day. I hope you have a great weekend and know how much you're appreciated. And I will see you again next week. Have a wonderful day.